but there's a practice and it why are you looking at me an age-old <laughs> practice uh, I, mean, I don't know whether it happens in other african countries but but i know that traditionally in ghana in many communities they do a flattening of the breast i remember decades ago it's done to make sure that um, um young ones who are entering adolescence don't tend to have bulge breasts easily and so when they are when they start having signs of breast i mean these days because of beyonce etc when the young pe people are having it, it's nice so we don't tend to do it but sometimes they will use uh, binkuta mm -hmm. Really, but we don't know whether it's a good practice or not. Yeah, whether medically it's a very good thing to do. Okay, uh, yeah. that's uh, still uh, very weird to me, even though it happens in our culture. Mm. I haven't. You didn't experience it. Not experience it. Haven't really seen it happen to somebody before. You, you never experienced it no. too. Yeah, and um, it it was painful. I was told the lady yeah. said. Well, so they'll beat it for you so it doesn't pop out. Yeah, I mean because you're too young. Yeah, so. More Mm. They mush it up, mush it up, mush it up. But yeah. we're, we're here to look at the medical side of it. I, is it a very good practice? And a senior medical officer with the um, uh, Ridge Hospital in Adabraka is here. And Dr. Dennis Botti, good friend. How are you? I'm good. And yeah, I, I, love, I love the way you've dressed today. Thank you. Okay. Uh, medical, is it a good thing? Um, I would say it's backward. Okay. I think it's uh, the practice, I think it's outmoded. I would say again, it's, um, it's it's a bit barbaric, and I don't think it's something that should be encouraged. Um, breast develops, and they will develop once yeah. a woman reaches puberty, and um, her female secondary sexual characteristics would have to come out, and that is where you see the clear distinction between a man and a woman. But even before then, before a woman gets to puberty, you can still see a young girl and say this is a boy and this is a girl. Okay, so um. Somebody getting breast and, and the practice or the idea behind the practice being that if a young lady gets to puberty and start developing breast quickly and getting much of a bulge too quickly, she becomes very much attracted to the opposite sex and then the tendency for people to perpetrate all kinds of acts on them or get them pregnant quickly and then therefore they might, out, they might have to fall out of school or get them, rape them, etc. Um, that is actually what fuels this practice. But I don't think that it is something that needs to be encouraged. Um, if, if it's happening here in Ghana still, I think it's time we, we rose up against it. Um, where I think the, the necessary organizations, standing for women's rights, etc., should come in and, and, and look at the practice. Medically, I think it's dangerous. Um, the, the effect would, would, not, would transcend beyond just the effect on the breast getting a woman's breast to become flat and um, even in a youthful days when she hasn't even started breastfeeding she hasn't got gotten to menopause and you want the breast to be flat because you don't want the person to be attracted to, to, to men in any case um, for a woman to get to a puberty or when she crosses puberty it is not only the breast that shape out um, the female secondary sexual characteristics include their hips their backside they tend to have more weight over there mm. so i mean if, if there's anything to go by the concept is that african men love more of backside than even the, the breast so why are we beating the breast so hard or tightening putting tight bands on the breast so that we we we, we slow down the the growth of the breast they, they will still have other characteristics that will still be attractive are we going to um, beat the backside or the hips to into into shape like a beer bottle <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have a story on this, and um, would want to uh, let you have a watch, and then we'll come back and do the discussions. Breast flattening is often carried out by mothers. They do this to protect the girl from sexual harassment and rape. It's also their way of preventing teenage pregnancy or allow a girl to pursue her education rather than being forced into marriage. It is mostly practiced in parts of Cameroon where boys and men may think that girls whose breasts have begun to grow are ready for sex. However, this practice was also common in Ghana in the past. 
We meet 20-year-old Adiza, a senior high school graduate. She went through the practice at the age of 12. My mother used this on my breast at the age of 12. She did it like three times or so. And the, in the fourth one, she left it. So you can see how I developed the fourth breast all the three times. It wasn't all that painful because it's not big. At that time, she said when they did this to you, you know, you know menstruate um, early, and also you know get big, big breasts. Adiza is, however, not the only person. Her older sister, Asia, also had her breast ironed. Yeah, I'm in the age of 12 years. Like, me feeling like it's not too much, sir. I was 12 years when it was done. It was done three times, but during the fourth time, my breast was allowed to grow. Because I was fat and had big breasts growing up, when my breast was massaged, it failed to disappear. The mother of Adiza and Asiya says changes in the environment causes young females to develop breasts faster. She explained the practice had no health implication. But medical... Mm. Interesting. Mm. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> Beat I it so it doesn't pop out. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised you say you had you had in, had no, no I before. haven't. I yeah. haven't. <laughs> yeah, but I, 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 is it something that results in any medical complications at all? Mm. If it doesn't, well, definitely, it, 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 it results in complications. And the breast is a tissue. It has tissues. It has fat, a lot of fat growing around it. It has tubules. Well, the, the, lact the lacti lactating for a lactating mother, you have to have tubules, like mm -hmm. ducts through which breast, must, must, uh, breast milk would flow mm -hmm. when you have a kid. Now, if you are using this spatula and vincuta, as they mentioned, or the pestle, or the fufu pestle to be ironing this breast, in what you are doing is that you are interfering or, or causing injury to the internal tissues of the breast. Mm. I mean, sometimes when it's not working, what they do is that they use warm or hot iron, uh, hot um, stones to try and do what? Melt the fat in there. Mm. The idea is to melt the fat so that it doesn't, because it's the fat that makes it um, um, huge. So they want to melt the fat. But when you melt the fat, where does it go? It still stays in. As you saw from the documentary, somebody said after the fourth time, my breast still grew anyway. Yeah. Some people, the, 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 the size of your breast actually is something that is basically genetic. You pick it up from your mom's side or from dad's side. I had a, a patient who was extremely huge breast, which she said is too huge for her. So she wanted to get um, plastic surgery to remove some of the fat. Then I asked her, are all your siblings like this? She said, no, my big sister is as small as anything. I said, so how come? He said, oh, my father's side, they have this size of breast. So it's something you pick from the family. So t saying that by beating the breast, you are going to stop the, the growth eventually. Start, um, saying that an, uh, you, are, you are trying to make an albino have a normal skin color. It's impossible. It will eventually get there. Because it's genetic. It's genetic. What you rather do to these children is to cause a lot of psychological trauma to them. I mean, when they should get into a system, when, when probably they are in, the, in their own environment with other people, they may think it's normal. But the day they get into enlightenment and mm. they get into school and they realize that, oh, my, my age mates all have their, their breasts, you know, in the standing position and all that. And they get into these public places of maybe convenience, going to bath, and they are having this flat thing. It causes a lot of psychological trauma. I mean, to the extent that for, you know, when people get things that are traumatic, they end up with what we call um, post-traumatic stress syndrome. For some of them, it's traumatic. Some of them are forced. Mothers would force them every night, put a band across the chest. Every morning before I go to school, they I would have to iron this thing. You put the band on you again to go to school. It gets to the point where they probably in the person's um, later on in life when it's time for the real deal. Mm. Now you have a sexual partner and all that. What some of them confess that they are very shy to be open in terms of um, their boyfriends or their male partners, even seeing what they have down there. So they want to have their top on and have um, their, in, uh, their intimacy with, with, with their top on, no, no taking off of their top. So that is a psychological problem that comes with. A couple of them too have had injuries to the, to the breast. 
um, if you're talking of this kind of pressing and pressing, as I said, you are likely to destroy the lactiferous ducts, mm. the ducts that would, um, 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 through which milk will flow to the baby. A couple of them mentioned the fact that even through all these practices that is supposed to stop them from probably getting pregnant early, there are a couple of them who got pregnant at 14, there are a couple of them who still got pregnant at 16. So what did the men still see? Okay. If, if mm -hmm. ironing this out is all that it takes to prevent the men from seeing them. Yeah. I mean, Th this, is, this is just like, you know, blaming the young girls exactly. for what the men do to them sometimes. Right, yeah. right. I think it's not fair. It's, it's not fair. So, um, as, as I said, they develop a lot, of, a lot of curves, a lot of hips. Are you going to beat that one too into submission? So, ideally, um, Roland, I don't know if this is running through your mind. Ideally, at what age should uh, a young girl begin to develop breasts so that the mother does not feel that this is not normal at this time? But this is we receiving yeah. eight-year-olds, I guess. Pu puberty comes at different ages. Um, for some, back in the day, you would even notice, somebody said in the clip that, um, um, she started menstruating much later. Back in the days, people even get to 18 years before they even have their first menses. Now, now it's changed. Now it's changed. You mm -hmm. have nine years, 10 years, 11 years, they start menstruating. Why? And uh, I'm sure you see a lot more of these things in the urban areas. Nutrition, improved nutrition. The, the, the things the mothers are taking even before during the antenatal, even after that, the kind of food their children are eating these days, it's much more um, healthier or whatever. It makes them grow uh, faster, um than before um in in our time so i mean you can have a child getting to puberty as early as eight and they, their breasts start developing and once you the parents see that they think that this would um be a bait this will be mm -hmm. uh, like a bait for a but you can to. understand that that is also worrying because to have an eight year old who is you know, developing all this that a you know a young grown girl should be having that that should be worrying to every parent. De definitely, definitely, yes. I mean, if it, it, I don't think it should be a worry as in why she's developing that. The the worry is about the what you think th is a collateral damage that could come from that. So but they use uh, stones like yeah, this like they they will, they will hit this one. Uh, so they they they, they kind of need need it. need the breast the way you need to br uh, exactly br uh, dough. It's like taking it uh, two times Plum. in a day, maybe morning, evening, morning, yeah. afternoon, evening. You need it. You know, you need it and try to think that it will melt the fat off and cause morning it Morning and evening. Eventually. <laughs> so where did this whole idea come from? Like, no, I don't get it. it. I, I'm surprised you haven't, because I, I think I've, I've seen it, I've seen it done, try. Yeah. Now, now, the thing is, I would want to ask, in, in this day and age, when, when we have women who want to go and have plastic surgery, have uh, they still have all the ducts and the tissues and things you talk about, yeah. but they still go and have some cut and some added. So, what's the deal? Yeah, okay, that that is that is um, surgery that probably is, is done with scopes, with done with ah, with machines. This one is unseen surgery. And this one is <laughs> 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 this one is trying to get off, get out the 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 fat with with the fat still in there. Mm. So you 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 think that you are melting the fat, it will still be there. Remember that with the plastic surgery, you are doing, they do what we call um, uh, removal of some of the fatty tissues. That one, they go in and, sh and then that would not pr touch the lactiferous that because the, that is a well-planned mm. thing with mm -hmm. having done scans and know where to touch and know where to touch. But it's a general thing, putting pressure, putting trauma onto the, the thing. I mean, it gets to the point where j just like somebody who has gone undergone burns, a gas burn at home, even when you light a, put a lighter on, the person is like to run away. So the same thing, psychologically, they become very depressed when they get into probably um, another sphere of life. They become very depressed. And, and, and they, see, they see a binkuta and they are even mm. running away. Or somebody mm, even right. mm. tries to touch the breast and then they want to push the person away. That's what we call the post-traumatic stress syndrome. They, it become, they become really de de depressed. And that is a psychological mm. effect that they can have on their self-esteem of this woman as she grows up. Mm. I, I have a little um, fear. I mean, even though this is so, so, so modern, we're in modern times, uh, you would think that this is not practiced a lot. But, you know, you can only teach what you know. If this happened to you, and I saw these two ladies speak about it in a nice way, um, when they were 12, they are much older now. Are people not going to pass this on are people not going to practice this today because if, if if it happened to me then i'll think that 
it's normal. It's part of growing up. So I'll do it to my girl. Yes, it, as you said, it's oral tradition. So it's been tr um, giving to them. So that's what they also um, want. But you see, society is evolving. Things are changing. People are getting to know what the right of a woman is. The right to life, the right to go, and everything. So as as we as we well, as we develop, they get to know that. Look, I mean, I'm supposed to develop normal. My body is my body. Is this is how God created me, and nobody should supposed to suppress any part of my body. And then when they see the probably the disadvantages of having a, a sagging breast at the age of 18, mm. that would probably inform them that I will not do this to my kids when they go. Um, I've, I've, I've read quite a bit about this, and a lot of them, contrary to what I, uh, this one said, a lot of them are not in favor of the practice. Mm. They tell you how, some, some of them tell you how painful it was, how uncomfortable it was, even to the point of this band across their chest and they can't breathe well, but they have to stay because their, mother, their parents tell them, you see, when you are young, whatever your parents say, you, you tend to uh, agree. They say, is this for your own good? I'm doing this for your own good so that you don't get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> this the, the kind of things that they, it's an indoctrination. And it's the same thing that we need to do to unindoctrinate mm. them with, uh, with this kind of practice so that it doesn't happen to people in future. And then as I said, in their case, they still get, some, some of them were raped. Some of them said they were raped. Some of them got pregnant at, at age 16. So I don't think it's that much of product. I think it can be very much counterproductive. Mm. They have other parts of their body that are still attractive to men. Well, we'll see how that goes. But now that we live in an environment in which there are a lot of uh, uh, th there's a lot of sex around us, not necessarily in terms of the practice, but in terms of um, nudity, um, feminism, people's bodies, etc. Um, then it makes this very traditional practice a lot more outmoded then because, outmoded. because now a lot more people want bigger breasts mm -hmm. they, they, they want it either smaller or bigger depending <laughs> on uh, uh, etc um, have you even heard the story of uh, how the aunties use it into yes and what happened is that a lot of them they have this problem of um, not being able to produce milk when they have the babies so breastfeeding for so many months they are not able to breastfeed and that would mean that the kids themselves are going to suffer um, anemia and all the things that go to go goes with them um, not being able to breastfeed the child. Now they use these ants um, to let them bite on the breasts of these women with the intention that it will make them produce breast milk. But again, that also ha also has been found to be counterproductive. Um, the, the when the ants bite, you see, when you have ants biting you or insects biting you, they can cause the place to swell. So the breast it can cause some lacerations or something, well or, can, or some abrasions. Abrasions or like direct stink into like a bee stinging you. Yeah. Eventually, the place is going to swell up. And so, if you have a lot of them around the breast, then you are going to have a lot of swelling. Mm. And the traditional thinking is that once you have a swollen breast, it means that it's going to produce milk. But that is not what produces the milk. Mm. Probably you must have had done a lot of injury to the lactiferous ducts, the ducts that through which milk passes. You've pressed them several times, and there's injury when injury takes place and, and you are healing again, sometimes when you are healing, they will sore. It gets, it gets scars formed. So you can mm -hmm. get internal breast scars or fibrosis. Fibers are going to form in the, these tubules instead of, hap instead of having a patent tube. You can form breast cyst you, because you are beating it all the time. You can form cyst in the breast. Who knows what again can happen? Um, even though it's not documented, mm. but who knows if all this trauma and healing and, and trauma and healing and healing mm -hmm. can cause genetic changes or can cause changes to the cells. And eventually, who knows? We always talk about women and breast cancer. These things, though don't not documented, can lead to something else. Mm. For me, I think, I think it's not a practice that should be encouraged in any way. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which one is good? You have the smaller breasts <laughs> or bigger <laughs> breasts? And then also, you have it late in coming or early in coming? <laughs> well, I'm surprised he's asking you that. <laughs> but since you are the well, doctor. Well, well, well. Um, it, it really doesn't <laughs> matter. Um, the, the function of the breast is, is uh, mainly for lactating. Really? Mainly? Uh, mainly <laughs> for lactating. I mean, though there may be other... <laughs> what, sort of, what, what sort of lactating? <laughs> lactating for the baby. Okay. Is the mammary glands for the, for the baby. But, well, it, 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 it's act as to the sexuality of a woman. Yeah. So, I mean, basically men are attracted by sight. So these are the things that they see and they want to go close to. But 
um, mainly is probably for um, mainly for lactating. So be it a big breast or be it a small breast, it can still lactate once it's done right. Mm. So there are people who have who give birth to babies and it was like they have huge breasts but the milk is not coming or you know that kind of thing. Somebody who has a small breast and the milk is flowing. So in terms of functionality, it's not about the size of it. Whichever size it can still do what it's supposed it to do. <laughs> once there's a nipple, mm. the Montgomery glands okay. uh, around it, oh it's functioning. What, what Even if it's for um, sexual, whatever. Mm, what makes the breast then sag then? Uh, Good. Because sometimes you you see that the when those who have bigger breasts have sagging breasts, it, it, it becomes a bit of n not to a good sign. That is, if they have all their um, their attires removed. But those with smaller breasts, when they have sagging breasts, it at least it, it becomes a little. Uh, yes, I mean the, the breast accommodate it with their eye better. Right. The breast is a huge. Um, it can, it can, when it's huge, it's a huge tissue. So when you leave it, the weight of your gravity is going to mm. pull it down. So you always have to support it with the braziers and then they look huge. But when you leave it, when you take those things off, you they are going the real shape. Yeah, you see the real thing hanging in there, um, hanging on. Um, that is for a young person who, um, or if, if you have somebody who is just breastfeeding and has small breasts, it will still increase in size a bit. But then even for that person after that, you see it comes back after breastfeeding. It, it readjusts readjust itself. Readjust itself. The bigger it is, the more it's going to sag. But we are looking at what we are talking about, the one that we see that it sags. When you are growing, the, 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 the size of the breast or the development of the breast has to do with the female hormones. The, the woman, it's a, hom it's, it's a woman. She, has, she produces her estrogen, she produces her progest progesterone. These are the hormones that control the female sexual characteristics. So indeed, the woman will tell you that even through her 28-day through her cycle, there are some times that she feels her breast has become heavier and there are some times that it goes down depending on what levels of hormones are at play in larger quantities at what time during her menstrual cycle. Now, when you get, as you are growing and you are getting to menopause, if this, the size of your breast is being controlled by these hormones, when you get to menopause, these hormones start dropping, just like men. Mm. They, when, as we, they age, their levels of testosterone also comes down and therefore their erection and everything also uh, has a bit of a challenge. The same thing with the women, as they age, the estrogen and the progesterone that feeds the breast tissue to become bulging and also goes down. So the firmness and everything goes down. The tissues begin to atrophy. The skin around it, everything begins to change. So it's just a cycle of life that mm -hmm. everybody is going to go through. Okay. But is it also true that when you're breastfeeding, it would, you know, drop? Yes. I mean, for most women, you realize that when they go through breastfeeding, the, the breast becomes huger and after sucking and the baby sucking and after even after that the shape of the breast does not become exactly like when it you were nulliparous mm. but then it also doesn't exactly become like like before your pregnancy yes it doesn't because it becomes it doesn't. A bit but but you know there are people who who don't have babies who have never you know breastfed anybody but and they are young but you see that the breast is sucked yeah it's, it's not uh, standing, you know, like... Really it sometimes th th that's a good question. So the question is, uh, this woman hasn't even had babies before. I don't know what her age, the pe this person's age will be. But if, if there's a challenge with that, the only thing to do is to check the female her, her levels of female hormones. It's possible her hormones are in low quantity. I have seen a young boy who is 13 years old, and the father c brought him to the hospital complaining about the size of his, his, his penis. And it was like the, my fingertip, 13-year-old boy. Oh. And this is what we call hypogonadism. So he's a boy, and yet if he's a woman, probably her breast, his breast wouldn't have grown to that size, or maybe it would be sagging. When I, I told the father, I'm sure this boy's testosterone is low, and it, the, his female hormones are rather high. Mm. And when I ran the test, it came out exactly that. The his the testosterone. What was? Yeah. So the wow. boy feels like a female. It's yeah. It's no, I mean, in, in what does he feel? He doesn't. He doesn't feel. He was worried about the fact that my thing is too mm. small. Yeah. You know what it was small? The his penis. Thing, his penis was too small. But what was up? Um, he had quite a chubby body, right? Mm. So when I did the test for him, the estrogen yeah. was so high. That means that he his his being his his system is a bit more femininized mm. than masculinized. Mm. So this the gonads that he had he had the, the scrotum there with the both testes were in. I examined both testes were in. If he, if he were to be abroad, he would have had a sex change. I'm sure. <laughs> No, but in, in such a case, what do you do? Do you give, like, you know, like a booster? Yes, uh, so um, we have 
a, a, a special unit with endocrinology, this is a hormonal problem. So with endocrinology, he likely to be put on hormonal things to um, suppress the other and increase mm. the other so that okay. there can be an increase thereof in the size wow. of the penis. Wow, amazing. Well, uh, there's also a second uh, bit of this conversation which has to do definitely with cholera. Once mm. the rains are falling, a lot of things happen. Uh, one of mm -hmm. the things that we know doctors worry about uh, when you want to do public health education is cholera. Yeah. So what what must we know? I mean, what's the experience at the Ridge Hospital, for instance? Do you see people coming, reporting with cholera cases? Um, <laughs> I had an experience last week, and uh, a young guy came in and was having a lot of um, diarrhea and vomiting. Mm. And around this time, we are very much on the alert because this is a season that uh, people do come in with a lot of diarrheal diseases, gastro, gastro disease or diarrheal disease, for example. So around this time, we are very much on the alert. So when once they come, we would have to probably suspect cholera. Mm. So we, as much as we are treating, we just to do the test for cholera and see if it was positive. And it was partially positive, so we all got scared. You know, sometimes when you do it, just like the pregnancy test one, you can see two lines, and mm. it was partially positive. So we sent the sample for confirmation and it was negative. So we all, we did so far, the case we have had so far that we've taken for confirmation, we've all proven negative. We haven't had a situation like we had in 2014 when mm. we had huge numbers coming ago. in with um, diarrheal disease. But again, the season is here and they've started coming in. So everybody needs to be aware that around this time, the, the kind of environment we have created ourselves, the kind of filth we have created ourselves, this is the time that the chickens are coming home to roost. They, they hit back at us again around this time. So we are eating in public places and, and buying food by the roadside, food that is not warm, food that um, you don't know who is selling it to you, how hygienic the person has been, where the person has been to, whether a public um, place of convenience, a public toilet and comes back selling things, or if somebody goes to clean her babies, um, uh, the poo poo and then comes back to sell things to you, this is the time that the slightest thing can give you a diarrheal disease, mm. possibly cholera. So we, we would say again that um, people should do the same things you've been asking them to do. Um, make sure you are eating your food warm. Mm. Make sure that you wash your hands thoroughly with soap and running water. And um, when you go to a public place of eating, don't just be happy washing your hand in the big bowl that everybody is washing. And then you also put your hands there and wash and then you think that you are off. When you visit the, the washroom, you visit the toilet, you, you come out and make sure that you wash your hands thoroughly with soap and running water. Because it's, it's a very devastating thing that we saw in 2014, which we would not want to experience again, to get diarrheal disease cases or, or cholera supposedly running into thousands and thousands of people and losing such lives should not um, happen again. So basically, I think that this is the season. And again, in this season, you have um, people throwing rubbish and garbage and their, um, their, their stools into the water mm -hmm. that, is, that is flowing. It is a very bad practice that we should... And especially as we're having the floods. It means exactly. that these waters are seeding to other areas. Seeding to other areas, seeding to cabbage farms, seeding to mm. um, all kinds of places that things would, that again no end up <laughs> things would again end up on the market and we'll go and buy. And then there are some, some, some kind of vegetables that... We, we eat raw, we put use it as a, as a um, salad, etc. Mm -hmm. There are some that But we have vinegar that we used to dress them. Well, I mean, that is, you know, the caution style, that, that helps. But, I mean, not every, no, sometimes not no matter mass. how much cautious we are, <laughs> some bacteria are stubborn and they still manage to beat the system. So this is a time to be extremely, extremely, extremely cautious as far as viral diseases and cholera is concerned. We mm. don't want to have that situation again. So everybody should be on the alert. Um, again, with these floods running helter skelter everywhere, there is going to be collection of water in pots and tie, lorry ties sitting around. Mm. And what is going to happen is that it also becomes a breeding site for mosquitoes. So again, around this season, we do get a lot of fevers coming in, especially malaria. So everybody should look at uh, into mm. their environment mm. and make sure that these portals, these points that um, mosquitoes get to breed are well taken care of. If if for nothing at all, you can have some kerosene or some oil in these places because it's going to suffocate the the eggs and then the mosquitoes from mm. doing their own thing. Make sure that all these things are well covered 
and you don't have it. Another thing that does happen in cold season is the weather um, and asthma. People who have sickle cell disease and asthma, they are a lot more prone to having crisis at, th at this time. Cold weather would just enter somebody who's asthmatic and then the person's asthma is going to be triggered. So for you who is an asthmatic, you need to be aware and then make sure that you are well covered, you are well clothed. For those who are also sickle cell patients, they do get crisis when the weather is extremely cold. So they should also be on the, on the alert to do what the things that you, we ask them to do, drink a lot of water, clothe yourself very well. And for our children who are going to school, um, uh, the small kids, they usually also get um, a lot of rhinitis, colds, coughs and colds around this time. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure that mm. our children are well covered, warm, long clothes, oh. warm clothes all the time. Well, we tend to get a lot of, uh, is it fever or kind of sick? Yeah. Yeah. Because we've all yeah. been getting sick the last two, three mm -hmm. weeks. Exactly. And cold so and the flu feeling funny. The yeah. flu season. Feeling just, funny, like yeah. just like generally it's time for is the hamatan season and okay. all that. This thing, this season is also time for all kinds of respiratory tract infection, coughing, mm -hmm. coughing, and Viral, coughing all over like the I'm place. Like I'm coughing, yes, I have a cold. Just spreading it around. So <laughs> We, we, we noticed that the refrain in many of the communities is that this is the time that a lot more people get pregnant. Is it true? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, yes, yeah, yeah, if, 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 if you're cold, you want to be warm, right? It's so. true. <laughs> it's true. Like, um, we, we, we say that as a joke, but it's true. I mean, it's, it's very cold, and people want to get closer to... <laughs> get um, <laughs> body warmed and then um, uh, the inevitable happens so we have a lot more people being born in march <laughs> <laughs> yeah february march yeah mm. february march we have a lot a more people coming <coughs> for example i was born in january i'm sure the ra the rainy season at the time started earlier yeah <laughs> don't look at me like that i'm a september born <laughs> that's exactly. even worse <laughs> exactly <laughs> means yeah. that's uh, the hamilton season right <laughs> yeah. okay but no, no matter what it is, is it, it is the caution that is supposed to be the refrain for many people on the minds. But <laughs> we know that we have the flashpoint. And for example, I, I manage communication for a company that's doing dredging on the other, for example. Mm. And we tend to have a lot more of the waste that we're cutting. Now, in, it's located in, a in some of the communities where you see hygiene is not. Uh, but the food looks... Um, and you can get some of the best kinky from uh, some of those communities. <laughs> for example, I love kinky. <laughs> so what, what should the caution be? That's the irony of it, you know. That's the irony <laughs> of it. <laughs> it's warm. Because you assume the kinky is hot, so if I'm heating. Yeah. But somehow uh, you just <coughs> get caught. I can take solace in the fact that it's hot. At least, this for nothing. <coughs> I will take solace in the fact that you are eating hot kinky. The, other, the, the other issue is the pepper. The pepper you are eating it with. Is it hot as well? Because but you dip the hot kinky in the, <laughs> in the <laughs> cold. Whether pepper. within that few seconds the heat of the kinky can kill bacteria yeah, yeah, <laughs> in so the is, is the other thing. And remember that a lot of people who get gashto, who get um, this diarrhea, we will tell you that either they eat some kinky and pepper. Pepper itself usually causes irritation in, in mm. and, and even when it's not the season, people come to the hospital and it's like pepper and then they are running. So it happens. So that is the other question. Make sure that the thing is really, really warm the okay. way you want it to be. Now, I have some <laughs> from Cape Coast. We have uh, um, Margaret, Cape Coast, Margaret. It says, I don't have kids. I'm 46. My breasts are still standing. Mm. Uh, please, my mom is 72 years old, and her breasts are also still standing. Wow. She has six, she's had six children. And she's thinking, can this uh, become well, make it difficult for her to get pregnant at 46? Well, for her, I, I, she, her breasts are still standing. If she, it's she, standing, she it's she a good thing, right? She still yeah. has her hormones in good, <laughs> in good proportions. I, I'm and I'm watching I her DP. She looks very beautiful, too. <laughs> hey, yes. Roland! You know, you know in, every <laughs> <laughs> in every, every population, they have the extremes. Those who, are, who, who don't f would not necessarily follow the same trend as it's, it's written in book. Mm. There are people who are naturally blessed, they are uh, naturally beautiful, yeah. handsome, even okay. in their 50s, etc. There, mm. are, there are men who get to their 50s and their erection is a problem. They are still in their 70s and they are still mm. you know, able they to still have yeah, you know, function. So okay. <laughs> let's look at this, though. We'll be looking at BAC because we're doing a, a, a we'll ask your question. But let's look at this. Uh, why do I get the feeling that Roland knows way too much about breasts? I, I, I don't. Uh, and it's that's from Miles from the UK. See? <laughs> Morning, guys. Thank you. And then uh, we have this one. Okay. Right. 
uh, you are saying that uh, this is a Kwan Bato road. Uh, government needs to do something about it because the road, I think I know that road. It's a bad road. Um, he says, uh, please, can I have a, a number to call the National Fire Service? I think many people are calling because of the emergencies. Okay. And then about the breasts. This one is from Mashud from Wale Wale. It says there's also a practice where some same is applied to young girls who have given birth for the first time. The idea is uh, such that if such is not done, the, bell co the milk will contain some ants, which mm. suck the milk mm. and will make it unhealthy or not sweet for the baby. And that the baby will not look healthy and might, and might grow stunted, I think. That's what he wanted to say. He says slowly. Mm. Yeah, I mean, these are traditional beliefs that have yeah. no scientific basis, basis at You're all. You're a science man. Uh, there's no scientific <laughs> basis No, but even all. listening to it is weird. Uh, exactly. <laughs> After you, they put ants to what, by the breast and to, oh, man. Uh, it's, it's, mm. it's, it's, it's a yeah. no-no. You know, you, you would always look at things on a global trend. You can't be in your village and assume that this practice is, is what, we, like we say, best practice. Mm. I mean, if globally it has been... Um, research has been done into it and every woman is supposed to breastfeed and produce milk how do you think you have to let ants come and bite breast before it produces milk i mean that is that is okay. stone age all right we have to end it uh, we have a colleague derek of course sam um he's doing roving this morning on the bc i thought you said you're going to ask him about bc yeah I'll ask him when he <laughs> <laughs> when did you write your bc yeah i didn't write bc i'm an old man I wrote <laughs> Willow Willow Willow. I forgot. Okay, yeah. You sure. told me about the second cracker. Yeah, the, re the reason the we're asking is because we wanted are people you, to share their Are you one of those BC who whose parents quickly jumped them into the yeah, old system? I, I, I yeah, I couldn't move that way. Because <laughs> I think within the period, yeah. I was also within that bracket in which some of my mates were quick, quickly jumped yeah. well to go and write common entrance and things yeah, like that. I just that. moved from the International Authority School to a middle school. Yeah, kind yeah, of. Yeah, I, I mean, it was yeah. a period when the new system was coming. Yeah. People were not too sure. Yeah. I think in the begin formative years, they were running side by side, mm -hmm. I think, a year or two. Then quickly, the parents were not too sure. Mm -hmm. so they quickly yeah. jumped. Is that system? But it also resulted in people not matured enough to handle the old yeah, system. The, uh, a lot mm -hmm. of people were not matured. But, but it matured I mean, you, right? I, I just love the old mm. system because I am a doctor, but I can... I've done economics, I did yeah. economics, I yeah. did geography. That's and all what that. I love about I can, your I can tell you, define economics. So I you're not narrow minded? No, like I can tell you, you know that like, I can like put the, like the law of the diminishing returns that and there all been that. An, the, the, the been, was it a debate that we should have the old system back? This whole BC. Maybe uh, you should probably uh, run alongside. Thing, because I still love that, that system. That, those okay. I mean, so that's I why. Did all kinds of subjects, mm. everything. And I tell you what, I learned to play the piano, not from anybody teaching me, but the. When I finished all of it, I took the music note, took a piano, and oh. that's what I, I used I thought to. you said that because you went to international school. I would no, have to no. I went no. To but, but it's it all because of what he was exposed right. to. Did so yeah. so yeah. we have a colleague, he's called Derek Ekosam. Yeah. He's at... Uh, he's at sitting, he's writing the BEC. Uh, okay, in, 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 in a community <laughs> where they're writing a school, they're writing BEC. Since you know everything, or you did a bit part of everything, <laughs> we want you to look in that camera. And say so we have uh, a reporter <laughs> who will talk, who will tell you about what's happening at the BC uh, or a school. Seriously, in Roland. Akutobabi. We want to say thank you for your it's time this morning. Thank you for coming. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Roland wants to pull my well, leg. Derek <laughs> for Sam is at Kotobabi, uh, a school there, and they're writing BC. It's one. It's like one of the schools that I went to, Nashana, class of schools. All they're studying, but without God, you cannot do anything. So you are confident you pass? Yes. Would you want to tell me how, uh, how many ones you think you get? Six ones. Six ones out of a possible nine. What's your first choice? Which school did you choose? Achimota College. Achimota College, that's where you want to go? Yes. Great. Let me speak to this one as well. Um, you look tensed up. Are you okay? Yes. Worried? No. You're not poised? But you know you'd write. Yes. Are you ready to go through these exams? Yes. Tell me how prepared you are. Yeah, I'm prepared because I know that we have finished all the syllables and we have studied hard and we are well prepared to write the exams today. At times you would study hard and all of that, but when you get in there and you panic a little bit and then you lose sight of all that you've learned, you think that's not going to happen to you too? No. You are writing um, English today. Is that your best subject? Yes. That's your best subject. So you are hoping you get a one? Yes. I'll come back so you tell me 
what the result will be for that English paper. You are so much points. But let me speak to the guy as well. Already dressed up with your ruler. But you don't write English with a ruler. Yes. <laughs> so why do you have the ruler in your pocket? In case of any circumstances. Really? But yes. it's English language? Yes. How prepared are you? Oh, I'm 100% prepared. 100%? Yes. More like you score 100% in the exam? Yes. Composition, comprehension, which one do you think would favor you? Or is going to favor me. So you are poised? Yes. Great. Let me speak to the teacher as well. Um, you've been training the children for a while now, and this morning I can see that you are here to give them the morale support to go through the papers. You want them to make you proud, right? Oh, I know. They would definitely make me proud. What are some of the preparations you took them through? No, the important thing is that you, as a teacher, you must complete the syllabus. Mm. And we make sure we've done that. I always psyche them that this is nothing. You should take it as a class test, not even a mock exam. Class test and relax. Thankfully, they are even writing at their own compound here. Mm. They are not moving to any other place so that we say acclimatization and these things will disturb them. So I always come to psyche them. It's not anything, it's class test. Sit down, relax, and write. You seem poised for action. You, 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 from what I can see, you have taught the kids well, and you hope that they get you the needed results. But how would you feel if the unexpected happens? Well, I would take it to be part of the hazards of the job. They're speaking about faith and the fact that they know God is on their side. Did, did you teach them that as well? Well, I teach English language, mm -hmm. but I know their RME teacher taught them that. So action in addition with faith, you are gone. He says action in, a, in addition to faith and you are gone. And that is one of the teachers here at the Kotobabi One Junior High School. Students prepared for the exams and all of that. We we'll would move, we'll move to some other centers and see how prepared they also are for this particular exams. Welcome back to studio and on the AM show we've been discussing quite a number of issues and you've been sending us your comments and opinion on them. Let's get on to Facebook talking about breast flattening and uh, Dr. Borte was in studio with Mama Vian Roland to talk about that and uh, Frederick says in fact God should immediately come to reclaim his creation and he says it has gone out of control and from gay, lesbian, transgender, I think there's more to that uh, on the other side. Um, naked restaurants and finally breast flattening but Frederick breast flattening is something that's been happening a long time ago uh, but Shervan Samlal says what do the women think I need their perspective and he says he knows nothing about it Sarah Ansa says breast flattening she's wondering what that is okay so it's actually when um, young girls who are budding or who are having their breasts coming have their parents use certain objects to hit it so that it goes back. Well, they say that uh, they don't want the young girls to start getting proposals early because when men see that they have breasts, they think they are old. And uh, Michael Thomas says he has no idea. Uh, he wants ladies should to educate them. Saeed Abdul says it's the act of making breasts small, and that's what he knows about that. But here on uh, WhatsApp, this one says flattening the breast is not the solution to problems. Um, advice is the pillar and this is from Prosper but I'm sure he's saying that to those who believe that flattening the breast will prevent young girls from engaging in sexual acts quite early and uh, this one says that uh, I wish our brothers and sisters all the best of luck as they begin the BEC papers today have a wonderful day this is from Prince Amwating and uh, this one says happy birthday to my sister Shalifa okay you didn't add your name and location please remember to do that um, this one says, I'm Sandra from Tamale. I want to know if massaging the breast can make it bigger than it used to be. Okay, I'll get you some answers. I'll speak to the doctor and some health experts and, you know, people who matter in breast enlargement, if you, if you wish. And this one says, this is a good topic and you look excited in discussing the topic. That's for you, Roland. The person said... Who you who look who excited. Who What's the name of the person who said? <laughs> I look excited... <laughs> He didn't add Discussing his name. Breasts? Yes, he didn't well, add his to name. discuss politics. I know, right? <laughs> okay. This one says that I think breast flattening is due to uh, poverty. Okay. Uh, Michael from Bulga says that, okay, all right. Um, I'm sorry I can read this on there. <laughs> all right. So let's move on. And some of you have also been commenting on the 
floods in Cape Coast that is reported to have claimed some five lives. So we'll pick some more comments on that. But there you have it, a picture of breast flattening and how it's done. Some have uh, the stone being used on their breast. Others have the band tight, tightly to their chest so that they look flat. But let's pick your comments on the flood issues and... Um, and these here as well, that's what we've been discussing so far. But uh, this uh, is from Gilbert Kopina. He says, where's President Bahama? He should get his motorbike and head to Cape Coast. Oh, really? To ascertain the extent of damage the floods have caused there. What he did yesterday was a mere publicity stunt. And Bonti Benjamin uh, at Achimi Buakwa says, very sad for Mother Ghana, yet some people were praising the president for riding an expensive motor for fun. Lord have mercy. Shervan Samlao says, Ivory Coast is with me. My intellect is stronger than the floods of earth chaos. I choose as we go further to hold my silence for them and not disturb their name. I don't understand what Shervan is writing, but well. BJ Kambani says Cape Coast. He's asking Cape Coast too. Well, yes, Cape Coast. Let me just uh, pick a few here on WhatsApp and then we move on. Um, this one says that um, nursing training school fees are increasing. Can we the poor people go to school and this is from Samuel in Boko he's asking that and um, this one says my kid sister started developing breasts at the age of seven my mom was so worried she took her to three hospitals including the rich hospital where she was born all the doctors laughed at my mom and told her my sister's hormones were developing very fast even now in the university she still has smaller breasts that old method is not true. Well, that's somebody sharing her experience. And I think it's deliberate. You didn't add your name indication. It's okay. But Roland. Mm. And um, when did your breast start? I can't remember. You can't remember. No, I can't. You can't imagine. I can't. You can't remember things from eight years. I can't, I can't remember. But I, I, I can't remember when I had my first. No worry. Let me. Yeah. Let me but not, I, I, I not, my, not It's a very uncomfortable started. subject yes. for you. I just discussed it. With my mom. I'm surprised. That That's what someone says you're excited about. I was, I'm not excited about it. It's <laughs> the subject of discussion. I'm surprised anyway. We're well, taking a break. When we come back, <laughs> we'll be looking at a number of issues. And uh, we know that... Um, there are concerns from parents, but uh, also many educationists about whether there will be leakages in the examination papers of the BEC, etc. We don't know about that, but we want to discuss that as well. And the floods, well, in Cape Coast, we've had uh, some residents losing their lives in the process. We want to discuss that as well. And then we'll look at other issues of focus. We'll stay on. Next is EM Talk.